Hello my frugal friends, welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Nikki, I'm an Aussie mum and I love sharing all the tips and tricks that have helped our family budget better, demolish all of our debt, skyrocket our savings and still have heaps of frugal fun along the way. So if that sounds like something that you might be into, I do hope that you consider hitting that little subscribe button down below and joining us for all of the fun around here. All right, today's video, I'm gonna take you guys for a quick look back at some of the meals that we pulled together this week at our place. They're all pretty simple and straightforward and they've all come from things that we've had on hand in our fridge, freezer and pantry and the few little shops that we have done this month. Now March is another month where we are trying to do a low spend month. We're trying to keep our grocery budget as low as possible while still eating a fairly good variety of foods, things that my family likes to eat and trying to sneak in a few sneaky veggies and all that sort of good stuff as well. So why don't I turn this around and I'll show you some of the meals that we cooked up this week. And if you'd like to check out any of my earlier grocery hauls, I will link those up above and down in the description. Tonight I'm going to get a quick batch of zucchini, bacon and corn fritters happening for dinner. I'm going to serve this with a side salad as well. So this is going to be really good to use up some of the veggies that are coming out of our veggie patch. Uh, like the zucchini which is going to make up the bulk of our fritters. Um, and we'll be doing a side salad and using up some cucumbers and tomatoes and things like that. So. Why don't we jump in and get started. I'm gonna grate these guys up, whip everything together, mix it all up, pop it in a pan, fry them off, and we'll have dinner done in a flash. Tonight I'm going to get started on this Japanese beef rice bowl. This is a HelloFresh knockoff. So what I will do is actually link the original recipe down in the comments. You guys can go and check that out. And I've made a couple of adjustments here as well, but um, you should be able to follow along. Most of the stuff is pretty stock standard. The sauce does have a couple of ingredients that you may or may not have. Oyster sauce, soy sauce, sesame oil and rice wine vinegar. We do keep these in the pantry. Um, a little bit of brown sugar as well. But what really kicks this dinner off is the dressing that goes with it. So it is a combination of mayonnaise and a Japan Japanese style dressing we were able to pick this one up from Woolies it's the praise brand um, and we actually picked it up marked down which was awesome hopefully you can still get it and hasn't been phased out but this definitely uh, tops this little um, bowl off it makes all the difference 
Then we have uh, the beef, which is flavoured by the sauce that we're going to pull together here. And we throw in a bit of carrot and zucchini to fluff the meat out, as well as some greens. Now, the original recipe has Asian greens in it, so bok choy or pak choy or something along those lines. But I often sub just plain old baby spinach, works a treat. Serve it on a bed of rice, so jasmine or basmati, either or works great. And then it is um, served with a side of fresh cucumber and pickled red onion, which I know sounds really weird to start having salad uh, ingredients on the side of a uh, beef stir fry, but trust me, that works. And trying to make this dressing uh, with even something that's a little bit similar is well worth the effort because this certainly uh, offsets all the flavors that you've got going on here in the back. You can chuck in a little bit of garlic as well. I think the original recipe has garlic in it. I omit that and then I just put the red um, onion for the people who can have it. This works really well as a pickle. So if you've got some vinegar, do a quick pickle before you start pulling everything else together, which is just slice your red onion up, pop it in some vinegar, let that sit in the fridge while you make everything else up, and then serve that on top with some pickled red onions and your cucumber, and anybody in your family who likes red onions will thank you for that because it is amazing. All right, that's enough talking. I'm gonna start cooking and I will show you guys what we end up with. Tonight's quick and easy pasta dish is going to be a carbonara. If you haven't had a go at making carbonara, it is actually really, really easy. A um, couple of egg yolks. So this recipe is going to call for two egg yolks. You can save the whites and uh, use them for brekkie the next day or something like that. Traditionally, carbonara doesn't have cream, but if you want to add a little bit of cream to it. You can add some regular cream. I'm going to add a little bit of coconut cream and the rest of this tin I'll put in a freezer safe container. Chuck it away to use later on down the track. Um, I've also heard people say that they use full cream milk as well which can work as well so I'm told. But uh, it's really really very simple. I'm going to fry up some bacon, get it nice and crispy, but you could use any kind of Italian deli meat in this and it would work really nicely. I'm going to throw in some chicken as an additional thing. Um, you don't have to do that. Carbonara typically doesn't, but this is going to be a chicken carbonara. And a little bit of grated cheese. So if you have some parmesan floating around, that would be fantastic. A little bit of a sprinkle on top. Then the rest of it is just a little bit of seasoning. You're going to want some black pepper and some basil. If you've got fresh basil, that would be fantastic. If you don't, you know, you go for the dried stuff. You could also use Italian herbs. You could use Tuscan seasoning. Um, it is pretty flexible as far as this recipe goes. The other thing that I like to throw through this, which I don't have because I've used the last of it up, but if I had it, I would, is some baby spinach leaves. Chuck those through and that's fantastic. If you have people who like fresh tomatoes, you could potentially toss some of those through after this is all cooked as well, which I might actually do tonight. I'm not sure. Uh, but this is your basic carbonara, chicken carbonara. Really quick, really easy. The longest thing is to cook the spaghetti and fry off the bacon and everything else comes together in a snap. Right, don't you guys hate it when you are halfway through cooking and then you realize that you were actually supposed to 
um, film what you were doing so that you could show other people. I don't know if that happens to anybody else or if it's just me. Anyways, I am making the enchiladas. So what I have here is some of the pulled pork that I made earlier. This is just one of the small 650ml containers with pulled pork in it. Here's the three kilo pork shoulder roast. It's been cooking in the slow cooker all day. I will link the recipe down below that I followed to make this pulled pork recipe. But basically, once this is cooked, and this has been cooking since about 10 o'clock today, I just came home and mashed it with a potato masher and it just all falls apart. And that is what we are left with. I'm going to pop these into the fridge to cool and then some of them will go into the freezer and I will use them later on and we'll see what other meals. So I have cooked um, one cup of rice, which you can see mixed in there, I've diced up a couple of capsicums that have come out of the garden. I've got red and yellow and some corn and I've just tossed through a little bit of Mexican seasoning. Then what is happening is they're going over here into our little rolling station. Um, I've got the tortillas are actually just white wraps from Aldi, nothing, anything particular um, special or anything like that. Some grated cheese. I like to do the really fine grate so it makes it go a lot further. This is probably only 100 grams of cheese but using the fine grate it goes a long way. And then in the bottom is just some homemade posada sauce. So I'm going to roll these guys up, get these in here. These are going to go into the oven at 180 uh, until the cheese is all golden on top. So it's probably going to be about 30 minutes. And then we will have enchiladas. So I will show you what they look like just before they go into the oven. Um, but this is pretty much it here. It's just a spoonful into here. A little bit of cheese on top rolling into the big baking dishes then when these are full put a little bit more sauce over the top and some cheese and then we're going to bake them in the oven so i cooked one cup of white rice but i probably only used half of it so i needed extra rice that i'm going to put aside for another dish um if you guys wanted to do this and make as much as what i am you probably only need to cook half a cup of dry white rice not a full cup All right, well, that's it from me today. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time here with us at our place. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, if you could please give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. It lets me know the kind of content you guys are enjoying and what you would like to see more of. And if you would like to see more videos like this, then I do hope you consider hitting that little subscribe button down below. Well, have a fantastic week and I do hope to see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.